Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you a clip between two scientists that are experts on, on nutrition and protein. The first one is Dr. Donald Lehman. I would like to introduce you to Dr. Donald Lehman. He's a well-known researcher and expert in the field of nutrition and exercise psychology. He is a professor emeritus of nutrition at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign where he has worked for over 40 years. He is particularly well known for his research on the role of protein in health and exercise performance. He has published many scientific papers and book chapters on this topic and has received many awards and honors for his contributions to the field of nutrition. Additionally, Dr. Lehman has served as a consultant to various organizations including the National Daily Council, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, and the American Egg Board. Now let me introduce you to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, another expert on protein. She's a physician and functional medicine practitioner who specializes in muscle-centric medicine. She is a graduate of the Arizona College of Osteopathic Medicine and completed a residency in family medicine at the University of Arizona. Dr. Lyon is a board-certified family medicine and osteopathic manipulation. Her approach to medicine emphasizes the importance of muscle mass and quality in overall health and longevity. She advocates for a high protein diet and resistance training as essential components of a healthy lifestyle. She has become well known in the health and wellness community for her work with athletes, bodybuilders, and other individuals who are seeking to optimize their physical performances and overall health. In addition to her clinical practice, Dr. Lyon is also a speaker and educator, and she has authored several scientific papers and book chapters on topics related to muscle-centric medicine and nutrition. So now I'm about to show you the interview between them and how they break down the misinformation given by other PhD scientists and influencers claiming that if you eat too much protein, that it will end your life. You will reduce your lifespan. In many of my videos I emphasize I'm a, I'm a protein believer. I eat a lot of protein and I am perfect. I'm in perfect health. All my biomarkers are in perfect health. So enough said. Without further ado, let's listen to the clip and then I will speak about the clip after. Enjoy the video. What's up guys? Dr. Gabrielle Lyon here with longtime mentor, best friend, Dr. Donald Lehman. And we really, really aim to bring you some of the most updated and unbiased information that we can. And, um, and our topic of conversation today is about longevity. And in the Twitter world, which Don was laughing yesterday, has gone crazy with this concept of longevity and lowering protein to help with longevity, which actually you can tell we've been friends for so long because it, it really bothered me. And what you're hearing in the narrative is interesting because you're hearing individuals talk about why we should, or at least pose the argument that we should lower animal protein and protein in general to dampen mTOR's response over time, right? Not, you, you don't want to over quote overstimulate mTOR, otherwise this shortens your life somehow. And the way in which to do this is to actually lower protein. Did I miss anything in this argument? I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's and there's a whole bunch of things and angles that you know bother me in the Twitter world where you only have a few characters to try and present a complex thing, but. Um, I mean, I think it's clear that overeating shortens longevity. Uh, and so most of the research that's quoted is really animal research and animals that are in cages in sterile environments and presented food around the clock at libitum basically eat around the clock, which, you know, humans eat meals. And so that's the worst case scenario. And we know that if you restrict calories, or you restrict protein to animals, they will tend to live longer. And people have interpreted that as somehow restricting protein is important, but the reality is, is we're preventing overeating. Right. And we all know obesity shortens lifespan. So that's, you know, that's my, one of my biggest problems with it. But then the other big problem is people who are kind of tweeting about it, aren't getting into, well, 
lower protein, what does that mean? Give me the number. What do you mm-hmm. think is healthy? What we know to be healthy is 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram, which we do know that there's a lot of data on this. This is not new. This is important, but not new. The RDA, which we can all agree is too low uh, when we're thinking about optimization, not just disease prevention. The next step above that would be optimizing for even higher protein. Is there a downside to go say to 2.2 grams per kilogram? And I would say no. So that's one gram per pound body weight. For some people that can be high, but- Yeah, I agree with that. The conversation of reducing protein to have more longevity seems really ridiculous. When you think about, you know, here you are very youthful in your, do I dare say, I won't say, (laughs) very, very youthful. And one of the reasons that you've been able to maintain this vitality is that you've been training and you've been training your whole life and you do have a diet that is robust in protein. And this concept that we should then lower protein and that's somehow going to improve longevity is incredibly short-sighted. The idea of longevity equaling health is totally not true and not in alignment. Your mother lived to be 103, 102. We all know towards the end of life what that looks like. I mean, and if you don't yet, you will. It's rough. The idea that you are going to live longer without the discussion of the quality of life, of being able to do activities of daily living, of being able to be mobile, of being able to just stand up from a chair, totally miss those conversations when you tell people to reduce protein for this conversation of longevity. It's a mistake. It's the biggest mistake that I've seen. And I'm a trained geriatrician. So there you go. You and I agree on that, that the quality of life really relates to your muscle health. You know, we like the term muscle centric health because basically if your muscles are healthy, your movement, your activities of daily daily life, but also your metabolic health, how you metabolize Mm -hmm. carbohydrates, how you metabolize fats, those all relate to your muscle health, right? People who live past 60, really their quality of life depends on their muscle health. It's not an issue of you know, do you, I always like to say, you know, you may live longer, but you don't get more years in your thirties. You get your years in the nineties and a hundred, and those aren't necessarily very um, high quality of living. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm not sure why, do you have a sense of why we have other PhDs and some of the influencers saying that they should reduce protein for longevity? It's weird. And I, and I don't, and I don't think that all of them are anti-animal. So it's just this weird, I, you know, I, I don't quite understand it. Do you have any idea? Well, I think you're right that there is a significant component of them that lean vegetarian. Okay. And so it's very hard to have a vegetarian diet at 1.8 grams per kg. Right. I mean, you either have, you have to go to a diet that is full of highly processed foods to do that. You can't do it with just Mm. natural foods. And so we tend to, we tend to confuse the issue of having a healthy plant-based diet, which I would argue you and I have very healthy plant-based diets, Mm -hmm. but we also have relatively high protein diets. What would your response be to some of these people that are saying uh, that they should reduce protein for longevity. That's like saying you should reduce muscle mass for longevity. Yeah. I, I just don't buy it. And, and my, my first response then is what level do you mean? I mean, do you mean 0.7 grams Mm -hmm. per kg? Should we be starving? I mean, what level we're currently 0.9 reduce it from what? Uh, Mm -hmm. And that's my problem is they throw out this term that protein is bad or you should reduce it but they don't follow it up with a number. Give me a number and mm. I'll give you the science to either back your number or destroy your number. <laughs> and that's you guys, can you guys imagine it. being mentored by this guy? <laughs> that's why they don't give you a number is because <laughs> once you go beyond the, the generality of, oh, wow, protein's bad, then you have to defend your number and you're going to lose that argument. <laughs> right. 
It's a good point. It's a good point. After listening to the insights of these two experts on protein, it appears that the narrative being shared on social media and by various influencers, including those without any expertise on nutrition, muscles, and protein, may not be accurate. The spread of misinformation in this manner could potentially endanger people's health by promoting the belief that high protein intake is detrimental to one's lifespan. It is important to note that there's a lack of significant evidence from human studies to support any of these individuals' claims. As Dr. Lehman pointed out, muscle health is crucial for maintaining good health, particularly after the age of 60. An inadequate protein intake can have consequences on overall health. However, no conclusive evidence exists to suggest high protein intake reduces lifespan in humans. It is essential to seek advice from qualified experts in the field of nutrition and protein rather than relying on unqualified sources. And most of these influences, including the PhDs, have no expertise on protein. Okay? They are just making things up as they go along from mouse studies. Mouse studies, where they are conducted, they can never mimic human lifestyle. So how can they, how can anyone claim that protein will do this to humans? I, I, I don't believe it, and that's just me, and I feel fantastic. I feel very, very good, and I will continue to eat a high-protein diet. Have a good day. I hope the information may have helped you in some way, shed some light into the truth. Have a good day, and see you in my next video. Bye for now.